Jeep. Shake. Scrape. Percussion. And rub. Hello and welcome to the fourth video of Hit Shake Scrape. Today we're going to do uh, a session on the spoons. I thought that'd be really useful for people because everybody's got a set of spoons. So we'll all be able to have a go and practice these ideas at home. Uh, I'll also bring back uh, a little bit of the bones playing that was in the previous lesson uh, because I mentioned that uh, you could do the bones technique using the spoons uh, but I didn't actually demonstrate it so I thought that'd be nice to put that on at the end of this. Uh, there are some excellent spoon players uh, on YouTube that you need to check out uh, including Abby the Spoon Lady. She's got a brilliant uh, channel on YouTube full of videos of her playing uh, there's also Sam Spoons of the Bon. Uh, oh, there's also Sam Spoons of the Bonzo Dog Doodah Band, which I'm sure some of you will know. Uh, there's some brilliant videos of him as well on YouTube, uh, well worth checking out. And Jo May Percussion as well. Uh, she's I think still based in Bristol. She's got a really great uh, selection of tutorial videos where they she breaks down. Uh, different ways to play the spoons and different rhythms, so that's well worth checking out as well. The spoons are played in lots of types of music, from zydeco music in, in the States, to skiffle music, uh, from Russian music to Greek, to Irish, to uh, English trad music. They're found in loads of different things. There are even videos of people playing uh, them to, to drum and bass and stuff like that on YouTube as well, so they're, they're a really versatile instrument. I think it's time to, to have a look at them now. So here we go. Okay, so the spoons I have today are uh, two soup spoons. There you go, that sort of size. And they taper, they're quite wide at the back and that's, that's really useful, it gives you a good grip. Uh, you don't want a narrow spoon because uh, it's very tricky and then they start spinning around. So if you get a nice tapered end, even wider than that would be, would be really nice as well. And so you get two of those, ideally the, the same, same style. So you, you may want to bend them uh, to line them up so that they are uh, easier to play. Different, different metals will create different sounds. Uh, you might want a bright sound or a dead sound. So stainless steel will be different to, to silver, uh, which would obviously be different to, to wood or plastic as well. They, they can sound really, really great. Um, but I've just got these ones today. Uh, Different lengths as well will make a difference. These are quite short, uh, but actually I prefer a, a longer a longer set. So uh, think uh, think about that. If you get a chance to try different sizes, give that a go. There are different ways to hold them. Uh, everybody's got their own different style. And so this is my technique, this is my style, and it might differ and uh, that's all right. So try and see what works for you. But for me, I always start with holding it in the index and the thumb of your writing hand. So my right hand, I've got it like that, as you can see, and then just wrap that index finger over a little bit, and then the bottom of it will sort of line into that crease there with the, uh, the bowl of the spoon pointing outwards. And then this one is gonna clap like that. So we've got the two ends of the bowls together. Uh, these, so these, the middle finger and the wedding finger will go around the bottom, the base of the spoon like that. And then this one is gonna fit into the pinky. So the pinky is gonna wrap it around and it sort of fits on the, the uh, knuckle of the wedding finger there. It always needs a little bit of repositioning just to get it right. So there you go, you've got a nice, even, symmetrical shape there. Okay, now you want to hold it pretty tight, um, but not so tight that they don't move because the whole action is that sort of movement. So it needs a little bit of give, but you do want to hold them pretty tight because otherwise they fall off. Or you'll probably find after a bit of playing, they'll start sliding left to right. So it takes a bit of practice just to get that consistent feel. There we go. And then I've got just short of a centimetre there between the two of them. So we've now got our spoons in position like so. So our three fingers wrapped around that top spoon 
and then the pinky uh, wrapped around the other spoon with it just resting on your wedding finger knuckle. And the first thing we're doing is just going to play a nice slow tempo on the knee. So the bottom spoon hits that knee like so. So let's try going at this speed. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Okay, now I'm sure some of you will have had one of your spoons already going off at a weird angle, a straight angle, or the bottom one slipping out. Again, this is something that takes a while, uh, so you might want to pause the video and just practice that a little bit just to get a nice consistent sound and re-examining your fingers and how they're all lined up. But when you've got that, we're then going to add the second sound. So if you're thinking in quarter notes or crotchets, that's your crotchet or quarter note. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now our left hand is going to sit on the top and that's going to do this upbeat, which is going to add the eighth notes or the, the quavers to it. Now we're not going to go like this straight away, but that's where we're working towards. Okay, we're just going to add an and on the fourth beat. So it's going to go like this. One, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and one. Okay, so it's going to look like that. And we're going to do it like that because it gives you a bit of time just to, to think about what you're doing for that and of the fourth beat. Okay, and if that feels nice and easy, that's great. We can move on. But otherwise, again, pause the video, spend a bit of time, see if you can get that nice, even sound. Spoons. There, we're next going to add two of those quavers, so two of those eighth notes. So it's going to look like this one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one. Okay, tell you what, we'll add the next two quavers. So we're going to have this one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and which will look like this. One and two and four and one and two, three and four and one. So that that top spoon will hit them. So it means you've got to do a little bit of upward playing with your right hand and a little bit of downward playing with your left hand. So just from that exercise, you can now start creating your own rhythms using the one, two, three, four. Or the uh, quavers added as well. One and two and three and four and. So let's see what rhythms I can come up with using those two ideas. So a classic, classic Dave moment. Uh, I don't know where my phones are. Uh, no idea. Uh, and you can see it's, it's a bit of a bit of a percussion cabin here. So. Uh, um, sometimes you lose your bones, and that's that's just the way it is. Um, so anyway, uh, as I said, uh, I was going to demonstrate playing the spoon, uh, playing the spoons. That's the second time I've done that. Playing the bones, playing the spoons uh, in the way that you play the bones. So here we go. And uh, you can play both together. So normally you'd have uh, the spoons in your left hand and the bones in your right hand. Don't know where my bones are. So got two pairs of spoons. Let's talk about spoons, baby. Let's talk about you and me. Let's talk about all the good things and the bad things that may be. Let's talk about spoons. Let's talk about spoons. Like and subscribe. Let's talk about spoons. Let's talk about spoons. It takes great that spoon. 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 Like and subscribe. Uh, 
playing the spoon, playing the spoons. And a little special thanks to Nathan, who donated two pound sixty nine, so that I could buy a latte. Many thanks, Nathan. Nathan.